everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne and together with my good friend Wayne we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and today we are going to be taking you on another behind the scenes glance at the inner workings of our soap, bath and body product business. And today we are going to be showing you um, the testing and formulation of another one of our new products. Last week we showed you our bath bombs, this week we are going to be showing you our foaming sugar scrub. Our foaming sugar scrub is actually a little bit further along in the production and testing uh, process than the bath bombs. The bath bombs we are still trying to perfect the recipe. We're nearly there but just not quite. Whereas the foaming sugar scrub we have actually perfected our recipe and at this exact moment in time it's actually been sent off for lab testing. We've had to send it off for lab testing because it contains water and therefore it requires a preservative and here in the UK anything with a preservative and water needs to undergo something called PET testing which stands for preservative efficiency testing um, and that is basically testing that is conducted over four weeks just to ensure that the preservative is adequately preserving our product and that nothing nasty is going to grow on it. So that is where our little sample of foaming sugar scrub currently is. We are a week and a half into testing and we are crossing our fingers and thinking positive that it's going to pass that testing. So while we wait for the to hear, while we wait to hear the results of that testing, we are actually formulating the scents that we want to create these scrubs in. We have so far got one scent that we have created and are really happy with, but today we are going to be working on creating a second scent. And the scent we have chosen to try and create today is lime, basil and mandarin. It is a really fresh, really fruity, really kind of summery scent and it smells absolutely gorgeous in the bottle and we are hoping that it's going to smell just as gorgeous in the sugar scrub. Um, you guys know that generally I do share our recipes with you on here. We're kind of quite open and tr quite transparent with what we do share. Unfortunately with the foaming sugar scrub we're not going to be able to give you the exact recipe and the reason for that is that we actually purchased the foaming um, the foaming scrub base recipe online from a seller on Etsy and that means that we are allowed to make products with it we are allowed to sell products that have been made from her recipe but we cannot share with you guys the exact recipe that was used to create this however we will link in the description to the listing that we purchased this um, recipe from. So if you guys do want to have a go, you can purchase the recipe and have a go yourselves. Um, so we are very excited about this new product line. It is really exciting. Um, all the testing we've done so far has worked really well and it is a really lovely product. And as with all our products, it is a palm oil free product too. Um, nothing has changed in respect of that. So uh, I think we're going to try and knock up our first ever batch. I say batch, it's just going to fill one jar. I'm doing a small batch because we are testing. So I'm going to knock up our first ever jar of lime, basil and mandarin foaming sugar scrub. And I'm going to take you guys with me so that you can see how we do it. So the very first thing that we need to do in order to begin our foaming sugar scrub today is weigh out 90 grams of our foaming bath base. And we made this a few days ago. This is what has got the preservative in it already. And this forms the base of our sugar scrub. So I'm gonna weigh out 90 grams of this now. So once our base is weighed out, we are whisking it in with a wire whisk and we're doing this just to kind of loosen the base and make it nice and light and fluffy. When we are doing bigger batches, we will use a KitchenAid mixer because it will make it a lot easier. After whisking, we are adding glycerin in and we are pouring down a chopstick just to give a cleaner, easier pour. And then we are adding jojoba oil to the mix just for some really lovely skin loving properties. And now we are whisking again to combine the glycerin and the jojoba oil in really well. We want them combined in really nicely. And 
now it is time to add in that gorgeous lime, basil and mandarin fragrance oil and I can't tell you how amazing this smells. I know I've said it already but it's such a gorgeous light scent. Now we are incorporating the fragrance oil using the whisk really well. We really want to get it incorporated nicely. And when we have whisked, we are then going to split the batch down into two portions, equally sized, 50% in one, 50% in the other, because we want to color one portion, which we are doing here with mica powder, just a small amount, about 0.3 grams of mica going into one portion. And then we're going to whisk it to incorporate it really well. We don't want kind of patchy colour, we want it all to go in, dispersed really nicely. So we are giving it a very good whisk here. And the colour is lightening, which is what we wanted. We want less vibrant colours in our sugar scrubs. So this is a beautiful sort of pale coral colour. And now it's time to add in the sugar. And there is more sugar in this recipe than anything else and we are just incorporating that using the whisk really, really well. And then we move on to repeating the process with the uncolored portion of the scrub. Just mixing it in really nicely. And once this is whisked in, the sugar scrub is going to be ready for decanting into our jars. So now the foaming sugar scrub is made, we just need to get it into the jars. Um, and jars are something I just want to briefly touch on because as part of the formulation process, it's easy to think that it is just concentrating on your recipe and getting that perfect. But actually there is a lot that goes into packaging too. Um, you have to consider the cost, you have to consider how well it's gonna perform, how it's gonna look to the customers. So there is a lot to consider when you're talking about packaging. When we first made these, just to test the recipe, we kind of decanted them just into these little jam jars. This is just a tester one I made weeks ago. Um, and we like the idea of them being in the glass jars because we don't use plastic and we wanted the jars to be clear. So the only real option there was to use glass, but we didn't really like how they looked. So we went on a jar hunt, <laughs> which was a huge amount of fun, I can tell you. And we found a company selling glass jars that we wanted. So I just ordered seven just to test if they were going to work for us or not. And this is what they look like. And they come with these little aluminium lids. And I think that that looks a heck of a lot smarter than just those jam jars there. So we are using these jars. I shall link to where we got them in our description as well. These are the jars we're gonna be using. And then we got onto labeling and how we wanted to actually label the products. And again, when we were testing and formulating and just sort of throwing ideas around, we took one of our soap labels, cut it down and just stuck it on the front of a jam jar. And it looks all right but not great if we're being honest. It's not, it's not perfect by any means. And that made us realize that we really wanted clear labels if possible. Um, but the issue of course is plastic. You are kind of limited when it comes to what labels you can use when you want plastic free labels. But luckily, after a bit of Google hunting, we stumbled across a company that make clear labels out of, um, I think it's wood pulp. It is not plastic, they are clear, it is wood pulp. It's all been mushed together in some kind of wizardry to create a clear but not plastic label. So we ordered some of them and here they are. We only got 10, we got 10 little sample stickers. I love the irony that they were sent in a plastic bag and they're non-plastic labels. Don't get me started on that, but there we go. <laughs> There is our clear but non-plastic labels. They are on a backing sheet, so once they have been peeled off, they are pretty much clear. So these are what we are expecting to go with. We're probably going to make the font slightly larger and have a tweak with some of it. Um, but that is what we have kind of gone with so far for labels. So we're going to put our sugar scrub that we've just made all together now in a jar. We're going to jar it up, we're going to label it, and we're going to show you what the finished product looks like. So to fill our jar, we're actually going to use a piping bag that has had 
a nozzle attached. I don't know what nozzle that is. Oh, hang on, I can see. It says it's a Wilton 6B. There you go, it's a Wilton 6B nozzle. And I'm just gonna place it into a pint glass just for ease of uh, filling. And I'm just gonna take the colored scrub first and just roughly push it down half of the piping bag. So this is only very roughly, it does not have to be perfect. Then we're going to switch to the uncoloured portion and I'm just going to try and squeeze it down the other side of the piping bag. And this is so that we get a two-tone kind of colour scheme coming out when we uh, pipe this into the jar. And just for clarification, this jar has been thoroughly sterilised before we are decanting product into it. And all I'm going to do is just squeeze the piping bag and then twist the jar and fill up the entire jar like this. And as you can see, my jar filling does leave something to be desired, but that's going to improve over time. Now I'm going to place a tea towel underneath and I'm just going to whack this down fairly firmly so that it levels out and we lose the air pockets that we currently have. There we go, <laughs> one sugar scrub completed. So there is our completed sugar scrub and I have to say that the smell smelled just as gorgeous in the scrub as I was hoping. I'm really, really happy with that. So all that is left to do now is pop the top on and label it so we can get our labelling on there. And there is our finished lime, basil and mandarin foaming sugar scrub. Obviously the label hasn't got the correct scent because these are only tester labels, but they are pretty similar to what the final labels are going to look like. The actual velvet peony and oud is the other scent we have decided on. And that one there. So we have got two scents for our foaming sugar scrub range now, and we are really happy with how they are coming along. We want to add another two permanent scents to the range, and then we'll probably have some seasonal ones that come out each year, kind of like, you know, autumn, summer scents, things like that. So we are at two out of four completed, really happy with how they're coming along, um, and looking forward to creating the other two scents as well. So I really hope you have enjoyed today's behind the scenes video with the making of the foaming sugar scrubs that we are hopefully going to be releasing within the next couple of months. We really want to have these ready to go by the end of May because that is when our shows and events seem to be starting up again. So we are crossing our fingers and hoping that we can get these ready for actual release by May. Thanks for watching today. I hope you do enjoy these kind of little behind the scenes sort of videos. Um, if you do, give us a like, give us a subscribe, throw a comment down in the comment box. Let us know what you're working on at the moment if you do bath and body products and things like that. Let us know any new products that you've got coming up because we love to hear what everyone else is getting up to too. Uh, thank you for watching today. On Friday, it will be another of our regular soap making videos. And until then, have a lovely week, everyone. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs>